Welcome back to Talkville, the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast. We're here. We're here again. Um, we're doing something really fun now. Uh, if you join Patreon and support the podcast, top tiers get to be on the show. And so the last episode you saw, we had a patron on the show. And it was a blast. We really liked it. It's, it adds she was great. It adds a lot to the show. And um, so we're going to do that again. And um, look, patreon.com slash talkville. Become a patron. Support the show. Uh, talk, talkvillepodcast.com. You can get all the crazy merch. Inside of you online store has a bunch of Smallville stuff, too. Um, go to my Instagram, at the Michael Rosenbaum, or the uh, there. And there's an Instagram link tree. You can see what cons Tom and I are going to be at where we're performing. We're doing a Smallville con in October in New Jersey. So get tickets to that. And if you didn't get a chance to call in a hotline and leave a question for this episode, make sure you do for future ones. All that and more is in the show's description at Talkville Podcast, at Talkville Pod, all that stuff. You know where to find us. Write a review. It helps the show. And keep listening, and we'll keep doing this. People say, how many seasons are you doing? I'm like, right now we're doing season four. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And it's because of you guys who are supporting us. Recently, someone asked me how long we're going to go because, you know, obviously your character leaves the show. And I am so looking forward to forcing you to watch these episodes that you're not in. I'm going to be hearing so, what, how you think about them. Yeah, because at least when I'm watching <laughs> these episodes, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll have a scene here. And I'll, I'll check that out. That'll be cool. But like not having yeah. anything to do with it and like not knowing <laughs> it, it could really spiral me. <laughs> I could spiral. You think well, you're shitting on the show now? Yeah. Well, I don't want to shit on a show that I'm not even on, but I do that anyway with most shows. Mm. Most shows are shitty. Without further ado, let's get into it. Season 4, Episode 12, Pariah. Title Pariah, aired February 2nd, 2005. Paul Shapiro directed this baby. I liked him. Directed two episodes in Season 4. Other one was Jinx. Writer Holly Harold loved her. Also wrote Obsession, which had Sarah Carter. Guest star Sarah Carter, Alicia Baker, Derek Hamilton as Tim Westcott, Camille Mitchell as Sheriff Nancy Adams. Jane Seymour as Genevieve Teague. Uh, Camille is back. Yes, the sheriff is back. The synopsis. Well, when Clark's reformed girlfriend gets framed for more crimes, he is torn between trusting her and trusting his gut. All the while, a shocking discovery puts Chloe in a crazy predicament as a journalist and as a friend. After a previously on Smallville recap, which I think this is the first one or one of the first, we pick back up this episode with a couple of cousins karaoke to Joan Jett. I loathe this scene. After awkwardly calling out a guy in the crowd, Lois and Chloe finish the song and are greeted by Clark and Alicia. And after Lana sees the girl who held her at knife point, Alicia, she decides to peace out. Alicia stops to apologize and wants to turn over a new leaf, but Lana is resistant. Jason is also pissed off. All right. Well, this scene. I bet this scene took all morning and over lunch. <laughs> there was so many characters. If you do the math, I used to do math. Like, I used to do math. There are six characters in this scene that talk, which means it's at least six hours of filming. Yeah, but you know what? I don't know if you've ever you done know what that, I will say? Yeah. You know what drove me crazy? The craziest, why this scene didn't work? Why this scene was so bullshit? This is one of the worst scenes I've ever... It, all, not because so this, it was shot. You don't think this is Ryan's favorite scene? Not because it was shot bad or whatever. Not anymore. It yeah. is completely implausible that clark or alicia would come to karaoke night after all that's been done they never as i don't care if you have a half a brain cell left this is the last place you're gonna walk in knowing everybody's gonna look <laughs> at you oh the girl that killed oh this is where you do it you said i mean it's as subtle as a fart coming out of a buffalo it was just, I was in awe. I was like, how was this ever filmed? He's so mad he's making up folksy really phrases. The, the, only, the only scene that lasted longer than this one was Lana taking a shower in the next scene. Oh. That also took forever. It wasn't even that. It was just that Alicia and Clark would never have walked in there. And then, <laughs> then uh, Lois kind of making s terrible remarks on the mic. It's absolutely classless and terrible for characters, for the characters. You don't like Lois saying that. It hurts her character. It The the intelligence of Clark and Alicia's freaking shatters that for a moment. Her trying to apologize to Lana in this karaoke bar. 
the whole thing is ludicrous. And I'm not talking about a rapper that I listen to. <laughs> that night up in the Talon loft, we see <laughs> Lana continuing her new hobby with lighting candles. She goes to take another silhouetted shower <laughs> and gets attacked by an unknown assailant. She gets suffocated by the shower curtain and rescued by Jason after he breaks down the bathroom door. As he rescues her, we see some sort of sand-like material disappear out the door. Because like, uh, all these scenes lately of Lon in the shower. It's also, like these, the old, old, these old-timey showers, too. Like They're just like very like European. Well, she did but one I in Paris. But I didn't see the but, tattoo. Yeah. It's like, good Lord, I would never use a shower like that. But really. it's like it's like a fancy like tub shower. Yeah, it's very French. I mean, she did go to France. Yeah. And I guess she, Whatever. she had to order something on eBay. Yeah. Ordered a new tub. Give the me scene. one. Give me yeah. one of them French tubs. This scene didn't bother me as much as that first one. <laughs> I don't think anything did. No. Over at Smallville Medical, as Lana gets cleared, <laughs> Clark shows up to get an update from Chloe and Lois. They're both suspicious that Alicia was behind the attack. Clark tries defending his new girlfriend wife, <laughs> but Lois says he's too smitten to think clearly. Mm. Mm. I remember this scene because both Erica and Allison are such great actors. And Clark is in such a predicament that he has to, like, trying to tread water between the two of them. I just remember this being a lot of fun shooting. I, I, and we were all in it together, if you know what I mean. Like, let's make Clark awkward. Let's see Clark try to sort of juggle all this. And um, I just remember this scene being very fun. I do remember this fun. I almost wanted to comment on that opening scene again, but I'm not. Continue on, Ryan. <laughs> just all right. Interior. Karaoke bar. Everybody's there. Packed house. Alicia, who just tried to kill Lana, comes in with Clark. All eyes are on them. And then Lois starts making stupid remarks about her. And then Lana, she tries to apologize to Lana at a karaoke bar for trying to kill. Okay, go ahead, Ryan. And then the sheriff and Jonathan walk out. Oh, (laughs) God. All right, the next day we see an old friend. Sheriff Nancy Adams, haven't seen her in a minute, Mm. pays yet another visit to the Kents to question Clark. He offers the alibi, but the sheriff seems determined to toss her tail in jail. Mm. I think she just liked to rhyme. The sheriff leaves and Clark begins to get the third degree from his parents. They're upset that he's continuing to see Alicia against everyone's wishes. Over at Smallville Hobby, we get an explanation of why Lois is in this episode. (laughs) Ditching college during Greek week. She admires Chloe's Freak of the Week wall and learns about her media rock infection theories. The convo gets interrupted by the kid who they serenaded the night before, Tim Westcott. <laughs> Big old sideburns asks out Lois. It's a date. Before Clark leaves, he asks Tim about that night. Tim alludes to Alicia being there after hours. You know it's him right away. You how many know it's rose, him right in the very opening how many of the roses show. Do you give the, how, how many roses do you give that karaoke scene? Just oh, internal man, rose that's a three bomber voting. right there. <laughs> yeah, just the, they kept cutting to that guy, and he looked like he was guilty. This fucking phantom planet looking <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, just like you know, <laughs> it was just oh, what the hell is going on? I know. And it isn't Tim. His name was Tim. Tim. His name should have been Lance Burke. <laughs> Lance Burke. <laughs> and I like I guess, no. His name should have been Destin or Dustin. Dustin Dust- Jacobs. And they probably have, they probably got a dartboard uh, up in, in the writer's room. They're just, they're just out of like cool names. I bet it's a writer, one of the writers or one of the friends. There's somebody they know named Tim. Go ahead. Or like, hey, you forgot to name this character. Uh, well, t- Tim Scanlon produced it. Well, maybe well, it's maybe. Him. Uh, Later that night, Clark meets Alicia in his loft. He shares his new intel to feel, feel out whether or not Alicia was involved. Alicia denies it, but Clark discovers that she isn't wearing the power-blocking bracelet. Mm. She tries to relate with Clark on how difficult it would be losing his powers and then swears that she didn't do it. Oh, and just like Buzz Lightyear says, blast. <laughs> At this point, you know, it's weird because you're watching it going, we all know she's innocent. What do you mean she's innocent? She chose to do everything she did. Yeah, I just feel like it's like, I, she's. we know she's innocent and... I wish there was something to make me feel like maybe she did do it, but I never thought that. Over at the town, Martha's closing up shop. She uh, watches Clark arrive to pick up his mama, and they both offer their bodyguard services to Lana, who is afraid of a third assassination attempt inside the Talon. Jason leaves his girlfriend in the Talon and heads to the car. As he prepares to drive away, he suddenly gets strangled from something in the back seat. He honks his horn to alert someone, and of course, of course, 
<laughs> Clark super speeds out, punches out his passenger window, seems to recognize the familiar scarf that was being used to strangle his former coach. Tom, you remember any uh, scenes or stunts in that? No. Nope. Nope. No, re- no recollection. It's going to get better, folks. <laughs> it is. He'd punch a window in front of Jason, and Jason didn't. That didn't come back. Yeah, yeah he's strong. He could punch a window. You punch that window out. It's like so. What? Anybody could punch a window out. I guess so. Why isn't your hand bloody? <laughs> Shut up, Jason. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Jason. <laughs> As Jason is checking out a Smallville medical, he receives an unwanted visit from his mother, Genevieve. Mm. She makes a couple subtle digs at her son's new life plan and his girlfriend, Lana. Jason then questions his mother's matchmaking of the two in Paris. Genevieve rebukes the claims and then flips things back on Jason as Lana enters the room. I feel like she did such a great job of establishing immediately that she was not a good character. And I mean that in the best way. Because we all we, we all love Jason, right? But she, real quick, you know that she's not to be trusted. And I, I, I thought she did a great job. The next day, Alicia enters the Kent barn and finds Clark trying to bend a makeshift lead bracelet of his own. She tells him it won't work, and then she learns how her scarf was found at the scene of Jason's attack. Clark wants her to turn herself in, but Alicia won't admit any involvement. She then tells Clark that if people knew he had powers, he would be a prime suspect as well. She tests Clark by promising to go to the sheriff if he reveals his own powers, but he refuses. And behind his girlfriend's back, Clark heads to the Talon to share the scarf evidence with the sheriff, and she corrects him, sharing that Alicia couldn't be involved because she was being interrogated during the time of Jason's attack. Good surprise. Yeah, that was good. I like that one. That night, as Chloe is working after hours in the torch, she is interrupted by Alicia. After admiring herself on the wall of weird, she asks Chloe why a so-called ace reporter can't see that Clark is also a freak. She grabs Chloe, teleports into a car, starts speeding down the road, calls Clark frantically for help, teleports back to safety, and then allows Chloe to see her friend super speed in and catch a freaking car midair. This was awesome. This was a great scene. And if you watch Allison's reaction with Sarah behind her, just the whole thing was great. Everybody was so into the moment. I really enjoyed this scene. Yeah, um, this is the second sober-minded regular cast member to see Clark's powers, obviously. Peter, Pete. After an electric well, scene like that, sober minded, we then yeah. cut to Lois on her date learning about the history of old Smallville. Tim is fascinated with the good old days of Smallville, back before the freaks and when there was still morality, not like the present when the football coach is dating a student. Smallville questioning its own morality in the writing here is kind of funny. Uh, I... It is. It's it's kind of, it, it's funny. Lois leaves the date and we see a crude disappearing effect as Tim turns into sand in the middle of the museum and vanishes. The effect was cool until you saw his body and it looked like just a terrible CGI. But that, that was 20 some years ago. Did anybody else want to call him Sandman? I mean. Did anyone want to say exit Tim? Enter Tim. <laughs> Sandman. <laughs> Shell shocked from learning her best friend has superpowers and probably questioning her own journalistic expertise, Chloe's alone in the talent. Lois barges in after the horrific date, suspicious of Tim's involvement with the recent string of attacks. Over in Granville, Alicia heads into her barn and is surprised to find Tim there, digging through her belongings in search of more evidence to leave at the spot of his next murder. We also see a version of Tim, which maybe we should have seen in the karaoke, Michael's favorite scene. Like... A little glimpse of this Tim would have helped. I know they wanted to save it for a Tim chloroforms her and knocks her out. Oof. Back in Smallville, 27 minutes into the episode, we get a Lex sighting. I must have had a few days off in Los Angla. He's pouring one up in his office and greeted by Mrs. Teague. She reveals that she has a working relationship with Lionel, which is no surprise because dad has a proclivity towards redheaded foxes. Genevieve goes on to question Lex about Lana and the interest of her son, even though he was involved in getting Jason fired. Lex tells Genevieve that he doesn't want any more involvement in his high school relationship. In return for his cooperation, she teases having information on how Lionel was able to overturn his conviction. I found this scene interesting, and I can't tell you why, but I just I just saw like two serpents sort of squaring off, I guess, is why I liked it. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's the way to put it. 
Oh, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just had a solo scene with Jane Seymour. Yeah, it was cool. She was nice. Ryan's favorite scene. Clark goes to meet with Alicia, but instead finds her lifeless, hanging from a noose. Clark emotionally screams out in anger. Shortly after, Lois stumbles upon Clark and tells him that she knows where the person is who is responsible for this. Whoa. I remember this being very difficult because, you know, I enjoyed working with Sarah and I didn't want to see her go. But even more difficult, it's how do you get to this place of emotion, you know, watching someone die. And I remember asking Sarah, can you just, would you, would you please not look at me? Yeah. And it sounds ridiculous, but she knew what I meant. And I think you know what I mean by that, because it's the loss is what you're tapping into is I want this to be different. I, I don't want this situation to be what it is. I want it to be different. I, I could have done something different. And as you see Clark move away from this scene, he is very agitated. You should be sort of angry with everybody who told you, don't believe Alicia. She's a liar. Don't confide in her. Don't. And they all told you against this. And finally, yeah. you you bought into it. And by listening to them and not trusting your gut, you ultimately, she ended up killing herself or, yeah. not, or getting killed. Yeah. Talkville is brought to you by AG1. There's a reason why AG1 is with us so long and why we love them. It's because they make our lives better. That's right. Instead of taking tons of vitamins every day and all these pills and popping them and, and spending all this money, it's so easy. You take a glass of water, you put a little packet or a scoop of AG1, you stir it, it's delicious, and you're done for the day. It helps you cover your basis with high quality ingredients like pre and probiotics. I'm telling you, I never took, Tom, I never took pro and pre prebiotics before, and it has made a world of difference. A lot of my stress and anxiety it's in your stomach. And if you're not taking care of that, and if you're not digesting properly, a lot of times you don't want to go out. I don't know if I'm going to have to go to the bathroom and all that stuff. Um, th this AG1 has adaptogens, antioxidants, whole food source nutrients. Uh, I know if I drink it daily, I'm going to feel that extra boost. Tom, you talk about it all the time. No, I mean, it's, listen, it's, it's something that it's good for me. It tastes good. It's easy to drink. You know, like we've said before, when I don't drink it, I miss it. Um, and, and it's so easy. It, it dissolves so simply. It just gives you that little extra zing that um, that helps your body. How do you know for sure that AG1 is a quality product? Well, I know that with AG1, I'm giving my body high-quality nutrition. Uh, every batch of AG1 it goes through a, AG1's rigorous testing process. The ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrient density. Um, this is really a great product, and you know a lot of patrons have mentioned it. And um, you know I'm I'm really telling you that you should uh, try AG1. Least consider it. Um, healthy aging shouldn't feel complicated. The thought of taking multiple supplements, mixing and matching pills and powders is exhausting. We've talked about that. Just one daily scoop of AG1 helps cover my nutrient gaps and supports my mental and physical health without a lot of hassle in just 60 seconds every morning. It's a routine. Get into it. Start your routine now. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1, and that's why I've partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D, three plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash talkville. That's drinkag1.com slash talkville. Talkville is brought to you by Policy Genius. We've talked about this a lot, but if you don't have life insurance, you're not just doing a disservice to yourself. You're doing a disservice to your family. If something, God forbid, happens to you and you pass, you want them to be taken care of. You want your family to be taken care of. Tom, you have a family, and there's probably nothing worse than thinking about how much trouble it would cause them. You know, I this is literally off script. I was just thinking this. This is something you don't want to think about, but is one of the best things to get off your mind if you take care of it. I mean, I just made that up right now, and I mean that. Yeah. Policy Genius has licensed award-winning agents and technology that makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers and just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Even if you have a life insurance policy through work, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and it may not follow you if you leave your job. It is so vital to have this. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year. 
for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have the incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. Policy Genius has thousands of five star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who have found the best fit for their needs. Save time and money and provide your family with a financial safety net using Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. In a fit of rage and filled with revenge, yeah. Clark storms to the History Museum, attacks Tim. They begin having a super fight. Tim tries defending his actions by making things right, but Clark has one thing in mind, revenge. He uses heat vision to stop the sandstorm and then begins choking him up against a wall. The only thing that prevents him from his third murder in Lois is Lois rushing in and pleading for him to stop. It's cool that during the heat vision against the sandstorm, we hear a glass sound effect. I didn't notice that. Oh. Because. Me hourglass. Because you, well, making sand hot makes glass. Oh, thank you. I... Look, I'm here for science, as we've discussed. The next day, Lex invites Jason over and offers him a new position, paying 100000 per year to collude against his own mother. Because both men have parental issues, they agree and are now in business together. Back at the Kents, Clark's parents try consoling him after the loss of Alicia. He feels guilt for not believing her and thinks he is responsible for her death. Over in the torch, Chloe is still conflicted with the news about Clark, questioning her years of pursuing the wall of weird. She then asks Lois for advice on how to handle keeping this super secret. And Lois decides that if the secret is for someone she loves but does not hurt them, then it is not worth telling. After this, Chloe begins taking down the wall of weird. I have a, a quick little story. Um, I believe the movie is Sand Pebbles, where uh, Steve McQueen's, I don't know, not Sand Pebbles, maybe that's the first one, but there's another movie where Steve McQueen throws the, the baseball and he catches it. And we, I remember saying, I want to do that in this scene with Jonathan. And I remember um, John Schneider being like, this is going to be horrible for sound and editing. It was great and, though. And then he goes, but I'm going to use that. Like, I remember him saying, I'm going to use that for my character that I don't like this happening right now. And it was just kind of a cool little actor's thing. It worked. It's very intimate. The episode ends with Clark paying a visit to Alicia's gravestone. He's interrupted by Chloe, who shows empathy for how difficult it must have been for Alicia to keep a secret and be judged by all her peers. Highlights and lowlights. Feels like a crappy way to end Alicia's story arc, um, especially after her first two appearances. But um, I thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was like it was a little dark, but like I like that she died. I like that. We see how Clark deals with it, and it adds to his character and adds to the show, and uh, I, I liked it. A lot of the frustration in the show is it is Clark's journey, and a lot of the other characters are there to support his journey, and it's he doesn't want her to die that way either. Was that the way for her to go? Um, I mean, should it have been more of a blaze of glory? Mm. Or because it was just an off-screen hanging i mean maybe it was a budget thing or you're right thing, though ryan like, th that's yeah that's a good point it's off screen you know yeah that would have been more tragic and it would have like let her you know because yeah because hey, by the way someone with such a weak power kills her it's like well, she already took a bullet for clark now so she we've gets already a done rope that for and clark. then i don't know maybe i don't know i don't know what the thought well, was I, I think you hit the nail on the head, too. It Because it happened off camera, we don't get to actually experience it. We just find it. Yeah. And that's unrewarding in some ways. Martha and Jonathan's involvement now in the show is turning a corner, and it seems to be a little reduced. Have you noticed this? Mm -hmm. They've been less and less in the show. And um, I think I remember when that was happening. Huh. Because they were both like, you know, they want to work. They want to be more a part of the show. And they were always flying out. They are always away. And... um uh, also, Chloe knows Clark's power now. That's obviously huge. Based on Alicia dying, she going to suspect Clark had something to do with it? Uh, I don't think so. Probably not. Clark couldn't do that. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what Chloe's thinking. We'll have to see. Uh, interesting things of note. And this episode is aired note. in the UK and Australia. The shot of Alicia hanging from a noose was cut, presumably because it was deemed appropriate, inappropriate. inappropriate. 
At the end, when Clark is visiting the graveyard, there's another grave shown, and her name is Allison Dunn, which is the name of Smallville's set director. Did she die? Erica Durance appears in this episode, <laughs> despite not being credited in either cast bill. Oh, that's weird. That's really weird. Huh. All right, guys. Welcome. Hey. Uh, top tier <laughs> patron. Uh, Patreon.com slash Talkville to become a, a top tier patron or a patron. But top tier patrons get to uh, be on the show now. This is our kind of thing. So uh, welcome, Michael Piccioni. Thank you guys for having me. I'm stoked. Well, Michael, um, real just real quick, you you strike me as a guy who pays attention to things. Do you? Is it only Smallville? Or do you pay attention in your real life too? I pay attention in real life. My, I, <laughs> I would like to think my wife would answer yes to that question. So maybe <laughs> That's a good... it's arguable, but I would say yes. Well, you have listening good. qualities. I don't, but I will. I, I do want to look. First of all, I, I asked this question before that to a uh, patron who was on the last episode. <laughs> but what is it about Smallville that has kept you so interested and? In, um, you know, over the years, not only to watch it the series one time or however many times you watch it, but to be part of Talkville, to be part of this whole thing. What is it about Smallville? Yeah, I think the the straightforward answer is the fandom, right? I mean, this fandom is arguably one of the best, if not the best. And uh, right. for a lot of us watching the show, I mean, we grew up on this. I'm one of those. I, I can tell you first season, first episode sitting on the couch when the WB premiered and I remember it all. And so a lot of it's just a trip down memory lane, but it also brings a lot of fans together. And, um, you know, the community on Patreon and the community at the conventions, I think, is second to none. And and that's what I think keeps us all engaged. I like that. Uh, OK, so real quick, uh, Rosie, I just want to agree with you. You said that he was smart. <laughs> I, I agree with you now. Like he's but. Like, how great i could not even answer that question that way he asked questions that are uh you know thought thought provoking at times um michael we are in the episode called pariah and we're dealing with you know clark's relationship with alicia and some big secrets come out here the biggest secret probably of the show which i had no idea i didn't know that yeah. chloe Finds out his secret. Well, I think, number one, I'll just say, not only did I watch this episode about a month ago, I rewatched it last night. I want to make sure I was prepared. So I have notes for what it's worth. I, I wanted to impress here. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think the I think the biggest thing for me is, Rosie, what you hit, you hit the nail on the head. Like this, this episode changes everything for the rest of the show. And and that's why I fell in love with this episode so much. That's why I want to be a part of this. And I'm super thankful of this discussion. But Chloe finding out has ramifications for for the entire life of the show. And so for me, that was the big standout. And I'm curious, Ryan, Rosie, obviously, Tom, you as well. What when you guys saw that scene, were you caught off guard? I was. I had I I like I had no idea. Whoa, wait, what? I forgot. Oh, she's gonna yeah. she's gonna lose her memory. She'll lose her right. memory. I was waiting for that too. I was die. waiting for that. It's all oh, it's, it's, it's no way this is gonna happen. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm going, wait a minute, she knows this. And right. well, Mike. My- Michael, let me just throw this out real quick. Um, one of the things that I like about that, you and I have seen the show before. Rosenbaum has never watched the show before. He never read scenes that he was never in, so he How doesn't know what's you. going on. How dare you. And Ryan is actually watching it for the first time. So this is a very good question for them. But I will say, I forgot this happened, and you're right. It's a pivotal moment. So I'll throw it back to Rosie and, and Ryan. Yeah, well, I, I would say that the first thing that comes to mind is like, oh, you can't trust Chloe at all i mean look at pete and chloe she's got a mouth that doesn't stop (laughs) so she's you know she's gonna you know the the audience has got to be thinking oh man how is she gonna keep this thing when when is this coming out when is she gonna tell clark so go ahead i want to hear your notes for sure uh so first thing i have is is number one uh sarah carter alicia i I think a phenomenal role and i just want to say that you know we don't see clark fall in love too often on the show Um, You know, really, when you think about it, it's Lana, Lois, and Alicia. And the other reason why I think this episode resonates with me so much is because this is the first time I think Clark, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Clark has truly lost someone that he that he loved with, I'd argue, his his heart on on a romantic kind of level. And so that last scene or one of the last scenes with Alicia, um, I mean, dead. What did you guys think when you saw that? I mean, that was pretty. Uh, I didn't think she was going to be dead. I thought they were going to. She was going to rescue her, and I'm like, oh my god, that's gruesome. That's morbid. Yeah. She's hanging, 
And this guy, this random dude, freak of the week, who didn't even have a big part in the show, kills her. Like, what right. the hell happened? He's like Sandman or something. It was, it was yeah. tragic. It was it was like, I couldn't believe she was dead. I thought something was going to happen where they're going to bring her back to life. And then, you know, the scene with Clark crying. It was uh, it was pretty emotional, Tom. Well, it was, I do remember that the scene was very challenging for me as an actor and, and obviously for Clark, but I remember talking with Sarah and being like, this is going to sound weird, but can you just like not look at me at all? Like, can you, you know what I mean? Cause it was like, it had to be a one way emotional release in a sense. I don't know if that makes sense. I know what you're saying. Stupid. What you're saying is this. Yeah. Sometimes when someone's looking at you, it's almost like you're, it, it almost forces you to try harder or to think too much. Yeah. And when they could just turn away and you can just think about it and let your natural emotions come out, it's, yeah. it's a safer place and you could allow yourself to feel vulnerable. Yeah. Plus, she was dead. She was dead. Uh, well, and I was going to ask to a follow up and I realized it was many, many years ago, but was there any rumors on set that this, that, Clark's love interest was going to carry on beyond this because I found it unique. We see Alicia in a previous season and then they bring her back for a two-parter, no less. And I think it catches a lot of fans off guard to kill her or uh, have her die off, you know, two episodes later. It seems like a lot of work for obviously this big unveil with Chloe, but I'm curious, yeah. was there any rumors or any talks that, hey, this could be something we we carry on for? I got to tell you, the the... We didn't know what was happening episode to episode. At least I didn't. The only yeah. time I knew one episode ahead was when Rosenbaum would come to set and he goes, you want to run lines for the next episode? <laughs> and I'd be like, I haven't even read it yet. You know what I mean? Like we were, yeah. we were always sort of catching up. So there could have been talks like that in Los Angeles because we shot in Vancouver about how to deal with Alicia's character and how often she would come back. But to be honest, no one tells us on set yeah we we get the script and we have 10 days to shoot it i like this yeah. because it was more like yeah. a game of thrones moment where it's like oh wow they killed her and oh my gosh and chloe was there it was like good for good for smallville good for smallville for tri finally putting some weight into the show some kind of like gravitas or whatever well and that's that's another note i had was that, and rosie i think you've said it in the past but that's where I think this show does its best work, so to speak, yep. in its darkest hours. Yeah. Um, and I loved seasons one through three. I thought they were a little bit more lighthearted comparatively to the rest of the show. Um, but I, I'm a firm believer just as a fan that when this show goes dark, it does it extremely well. And I think this episode was really a a um, a sentiment to that. When we when we see these kind of things, that's when you're like, this is good. Like, you know, you you have that cliche out there like, oh, it's a superhero show. So how good can it be? And again, I, of course, love it. But this is just goes to show you that good writing is good writing. It doesn't matter what the subject material is. And I thought this was a perfect example I, I think of it. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think when, you know, you see these dark scenes with Lex or in Lionel and you see, you know, Clark losing someone he loves that you didn't really anticipate and you have these surprises it's it's not like being dark for dark sake. It's it's darkness that enhances the story, that uh, makes it feel a little more powerful, that um, it lets you it's know. It's definitely that, worth at least half a rose kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> it makes you feel like, you know, everyone's yeah. sort of expendable, you know, like yeah. we don't know what's and, and And putting that on the show, I think, is more intriguing, gets people more uh, more people to watch. I also just think that Michael P is so articulate that I feel like we should be a guest on his podcast. <laughs> yeah, I right. feel like you, I feel like you, I think you're doing a better job than we are at this. Just say <laughs> Talkville is brought to you by good chop. I love good chop, Tom. I mean, they offer fully customizable boxes of high quality meat and seafood delivered to your door on your schedule. And we're not talking about, this is vacuum sealed and frozen at peak freshness so you can stock your freezer and cook when you want. And you're probably thinking that it's really expensive, but it's not. Good Chop's price per meal starts at just $3.74. You're not getting artificial ingredients, only the good stuff. No antibiotics or added hormones. And they're so confident in the quality of their cuts, they give you a 100% money back guarantee. You love Good Chop or you get your money back. This is... I just had steaks again the other day. Bill, who's out there in the other room, a good buddy of mine, he made some steaks. 
with some rice and some veggies. And I'm telling you, these steaks are phenomenal, phenomenal. And free range and organic chicken breast, pork tenderloin, thick cut bacon. The, the bacon is freaking the bomb, man. Filet mignon. They also have sustainable and wild caught seafood. They have salmon, Pacific cod scallops, shrimp, which I'm making tonight with some garlic and more. It's just amazing. And Good Chop sources its meat and seafood exclusively from American farms and fisheries. You are going to freaking flip out when you try Good Chop. It is honestly just phenomenal. It's great stuff, and it shows up to your house. Yeah. How beautiful is that? You don't have to go to the freaking grocery store to get all this stuff. You're getting the top quality meats for a good price. Go to goodchop.com slash Talkville120 and use code Talkville120 to get $120 off across your first four boxes. That's code at Talkville120 at goodchop.com slash Talkville120 for $120 off. Goodchop.com slash Talkville120, code Talkville 120. So we talk about, you know, you guys have on the show highlights and lowlights. I think for me, you know, I want to keep it positive, but I also got to keep it constructive. I think Tim, the villain, um, if there was a reason why I'm going to take off a half a rose or a rose for this episode, I got to say it's the villain. Wasn't developed. Um, Wasn't developed at all. No one cared. And it was predictable. Yeah, I thought it was a throwaway character. I thought the um, I thought from uh, um, from just a viewer standpoint, you know, you see Alicia getting framed. I was just like. It's just too obvious. Like Alicia's not going to leave her scarf at the scene of a crime when she's trying to uh, uh, choke um, or the Jason, jacket or uh, the jacket. We found the jacket. Come on. Is she that yeah. stupid? Right. It's like, come right. on, man. It's like, you know, it, but, I, you know, for the actor, it's I feel bad because they didn't develop it. They didn't give him much. And he just was. A, so I'm, I'm sure he's a great actor and all that. But he yeah. just wasn't given enough. And it was just sort of uh, Ryan. Maybe you caught this and Bryce probably did, too. When during the karaoke scene, when he's acknowledged, that character is acknowledged, he 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 plays this thing of like, oh, no. Oh, I don't I don't know if one little crazy little look out of the corner of his eye would have helped the whole episode. Yeah. Just the fact that they cut you know to him. I mean? knew he was going to be a thing. Uh, I wasn't sure how or when. Yeah, and then, he got, then he had this weird like backwards like motivation it was, it was really strange. It just was weird. It wasn't developed. It wasn't. It just. It's just. You know. It, it's. It's just shit that happens. Um, we don't have too much yeah. time, Michael. But listen, um, what is it? How many times have you seen the series? Be honest. Uh, I mean, not as many as some out there, but I'm going to say five times, six times. Is it just something that's easy to watch? It, it's easy to watch, and then if I get deep with you guys for a second, I think it's also this. It's the nostalgia. Like it also takes you back, and it's just. I mean, you all just did such a phenomenal job on the show. I mean, let's keep it real. I'm not going to rewatch a show that I didn't like. Um, True. There's a reason why people rewatch a show that they already know the ending for. It's because it still is entertaining um, and it still holds up. And again, I'm not going to uh, necessarily jump on a soapbox here, but I will still say that Smallville is arguably the best uh, comic book adaptation or, or, or something made for TV show wise that's ever been um they set the bar oh. and i'll argue they continue to have that bar they continue to have that and that's you know tom your acting is is phenomenal rosie i mean the same thing you guys the partnership that you guys had there in the chemistry that every single set member had I, i'd argue is second to none you guys had something special and um i don't care if the yep. show was called uh downtown it it, it doesn't matter <laughs> The chemistry that you guys had is just something impressive. Do you watch the show with your wife? (laughs) So it's funny. I'm going to take a quick second. I'm going to take a quick second. Here, you opened up a can of worms, Tom, so Bryce can't be mad at me. So I'll say, years ago, when I first met my wife, number one, Rosie, I went to a comic book convention, Dragon Con in Atlanta. I just met her. And you said, you dragged this lady all the way up to Atlanta because we were coming from Gainesville, Florida. You said she came all the way up here to visit and to come here to this comic book convention. She has no interest in this whatsoever. You need to marry her. So every time I see Rosie, I say, hey, listen, I put a ring on it and it's a done deal. So the reason why I bring this full circle, she had never seen Smallville ever, ever. And in fact, when we were together, this show means so much to me. When we were together and the finale aired many years ago, 
I said, listen, I need this moment by myself. I need to watch this finale. <laughs> Tom, I was in tears when this, much like probably a lot of fans were, I was in tears. And then when the show was over, it was a milestone. I said, babe, we got to watch this show together. And I will tell you, she is not a comic book nerd like me at all, but she has watched this show probably three or four times and she is a believer. Wow. So wow. yes, it has the rewatch value to somebody as passionate like me and someone like her. And then I have two little kids at home. Uh, when they get older, maybe the generations, you know, continue. So we'll see. It's the it's the show that continues to give. You're a gem. You uh, you're the reason why the show uh, was so successful. It's it, it's folks like you that are dedicated and believers and just so supportive. And without you, were nothing. Just like the patrons. Um, thank no, you for, we wouldn't do this. Thank you for be being an amazing yeah. patient. Hotline talk. It's time for the hotline, hotline, folks. You know the number. You know how to do it. It's in the show's description. Let's go right to it. Patron privilege. Patreon.com slash Talkville. If you want to become a patron, you could be on the show. You could ask questions. There's so many perks. Here's Thomas the Leaf Blower. We know Thomas the Leaf Blower, don't we? Hey, it's Thomas the Leaf Blower with a question for the season four episode Pariah. Uh, Tom, when you caught that car in midair, how was that done? I always love these kind of action scenes. I love his quick questions. Thank you. No, these are great. Um, what I loved about this watching it is how the car kind of maneuvered in the visual effects of it. And I will say what I used to do is I used to try to feel the pressure in my hands and in my entire body. I didn't want to just stand there and grab it and move it like this. I wanted to get my feet involved. And this was something that, I don't know, just made sense to me from maybe some martial arts stuff. Like if I was going to catch a car, it would I'd have to use my whole body balance, not just like a one-headed grab. Yeah, you don't get enough baseball. credit for that. All the things you have to do, not knowing exactly what you're going to be doing or how heavy or whatever, and you're still playing, like your facial gestures, everything works. So trusting the director and the visual effects and you, it all worked really nicely. Here's Kristen B. This is patron Kristen B. from Ohio. For the episode Pariah, Alicia has a change of heart and decides to expose Clark's secret to Chloe. Since Chloe opted not to share Clark's secret, do you think Alicia would have outed Clark to everyone if she had survived? Thanks, guys. I don't think so, Tom. Her character kind of used it as leverage a couple times, too. She does have a dark side and a, um, you know, like, hey, I'm not going to tell anybody, but I could. Yep. Well, she showed Chloe. She went against her promise, and she... That's what I mean. Yeah, so how this... good was she? Hey, guys, this is Jonathan from Fairview Heights, Illinois. Chloe finds out that Clark has powers, although thinking that Clark is another meteor freak. Did you or Tom get worried that Chloe wouldn't last long on the show? I know once Pete found out in season two, you mentioned being worried about his character not lasting long uh, on the show. Uh, love the podcast. Always went on to Smallville. You rock, buddy. You know what? That's a great question, man. Jonathan, I think that, you know, I didn't, I didn't think about it then because I didn't watch it. But um, I, I think that, yeah, she's like, you know, if something's got to maybe happen tragically to Chloe where her his secret's safe, like inadvertently, I, I don't know. But that's that that's pretty cool, I, I, I you know, to think that, you know, now that she knows this is, is her life in jeopardy or is her leaving the show in jeopardy. This... It also would have been a great time for her to be like, you know, Pete, call me back as soon as you get this. And then like Pete shows up and he's like, that would have been cool. Yeah. And she's like, do you know something, anything about Clark that you're not, you never told me? How'd you get my number? Chloe? He's like, yeah. Uh, Patrick. Hey guys, this is Patrick from Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, one of my favorite episodes of the series was Chloe finding out about Clark and the heaviness of the episode's ending. Uh, my question is for you, Tom. Alicia, albeit dead, has a very emotionally charged I told you so moment where Clark finds out he was wrong about her and she is innocent just in time to find her dead. Uh, did you try to harness the weight and impact of this into how uh, Clark deals with Lex or any other bad guy and that he always tries to see the best and every life is worth saving? Or is that just something that's already in Clark's nature and once the episode was over, you moved on? But love the podcast. Look forward to it every week. I do recall having found Alicia and her being, her being you know, dead, that... I remember playing like Clark didn't know what to do and just being very reactionary and not very thoughtful. Um, but I don't know if it carried on to other episodes, so to speak. Uh, no. Uh, I'm going to go to Jackie's question. 
Hi, this is Jackie from New York City. Clark was really vulnerable with Lois at the end of this episode, more than we've seen him be with anyone but his parents. Tom, was that a choice you made, or was that what the script called for? Thanks, guys. Love the show. Uh, this is a script thing. That's them, them, them bringing, you know, now that Alicia's not there anymore, I think they're starting to bring Lois into the fold a little bit of the story. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Tom, I can't tell you how much therapy helps me and helps so many of my friends. Ryan uses BetterHelp. It is just something that I, it's part of my routine and um, BetterHelp's been with us a long time. And guys, the stigma is gone. Uh, getting help and, and feeling better about yourself and learning things about yourself, understanding is, is, is part of the process and so important so you don't end up old and miserable. <laughs> it can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin, especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter. Maybe you thrive around people or maybe you need some more alone time. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. Therapy with BetterHelp is just a good place to start when you want to understand you better. If you're thinking of starting therapy, please give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. It takes no time at all to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Talkville today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Talkville. Talkville is brought to you by NHTSA. Every day when we're on the road, people around us endanger themselves and others by using their phones while driving. I talk about this all the time. They think they're hiding it, but we've all seen them and know exactly who they are. For instance, there's the sneak a peeker who darts their eyes between the road and the text. There's also the got a ticketer looking upset because they just got a ticket for using their phone while driving. And what about the fast scroller who can't drive five minutes without updating their social feeds? Or the night lighter who has that mysterious glow illuminating the inside of their car after dark. Do any of these sound familiar? If they remind you of yourself or someone you know, please rethink your behavior before you find yourself becoming the fender benderer, the veering off the rotor, or worst of all, the driver who killed someone. Put the phone away or pay. Paid for by NHTSA. Hi guys, this is Sinetra from Virginia. The story arc for Alicia were two episodes and abruptly ended. It seemed like it was meant to go longer. Do you know if something changed causing the writers to kill off the character? Great job, Tom. I felt all emotions when Clark reacted to finding her dead. Love the show. Bye. Thanks. Uh, you know, I think it had to come to an end and it had to come abruptly. I mean, you couldn't really carry this storyline on. It was just kind of becoming less of what Smallville's about and you had to move on to the real story and this was a, a nice segment of the story which helped propel Clark and the rest of the characters around him. This is a very powerful relationship in this show based on the, all the questions we have about it. it. Sure did resonate. Right, Ryan? This is an interesting question sure did. from Troy. Hey, this is Troy Coleman from Didden, Texas. I'm just wondering why Jason Teague didn't work somewhere else. He could have worked at the Talon. He could have been a farmhand. But why pick the school where his girlfriend goes? Thanks. Because he's a pervert. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's a great question. That, you know, hey, I'm, a, I'm the football coach at uh, your school. Maybe because his mom pulled strings and all that stuff. I don't Who knows? I think that's a missed opportunity. I could have seen him like helping out on the kent farm becoming wouldn't friends that have been with, interesting becoming friends with clark and working his way in, no that would have been too weird would that have been too much it would have been boring as hell playing basketball together no no i mean more so hanging out with jonathan i could see them like <laughs> broing out talking uh, football and bryant we love you but we answered your question uh you know uh, about how did you prepare clark prepare himself emotionally or tom for the performance of his first love um, loss of the series and um, you know he talked about that but uh, Sergio let's talk to Sergio 
Hello, my name is Sergio from Massachusetts. Alicia's death is the first time as a kid I cried for a character seeing her completely redeem herself and then die. I was wondering if you three had characters that affected you this much before. Thank you. Was I affected by watching any TV programs or whatever where a character dies? And it... Like, uh, you know, like Magnum P.I. or Miami's Ice or... I'm not that old, you son of a bee. <laughs> um... There were moments in, I guess, Game of Thrones when the Hound died. I didn't like when the Hound died. Yeah. I got a little emotion. I loved the Hound. I cried when The Office ended. I didn't. I watched, I mean, I watched it all of it. Lost made me cry. Yeah. The end of Lost. Tom, did you cry at 24, you nerd? <laughs> no, but it did. The end of 24 inspired the end of Smallville, which I've spoken about before. We, we pretty much ended the show the, very similarly. Yeah, I mean, I, I I just can't believe you actually watched all of Lost to be upset. Hey, guys, it's Chewie from Australia. Uh, near the end of the episode, Tom, uh, Clark almost kills basically the bad guy in this episode. And I just wanted to see, like, what your thoughts were, like, how you went about playing that scene. Just because, obviously, he, you've done Red Clark before, you've done Lionel, but this is Clark, like, reacting in that way. Like, and I thought it was a really cool uh, kind of way to do it, especially uh, Lois being there to calm you down. But, um, you know, how do you feel about that whole scenario, Tom? Right, cheers, guys. Loving the podcast. Great episode. Great, great question, because... You know, you could have killed him. Yeah. And you might have with your strength. Yeah. And that would have been who cares? Like you killed a guy who killed the girl. Like he's he's evil. Like, but yeah, but Clark doesn't do that. That's a good question. It's the first time you see Clark react out of rage without being kryptonite infected. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, listen to like Rosenbaum, you and I just saw each other not long ago at a con and we were talking about seven. And what's in the box? What's in the box? And what Brad Pitt does in that moment, you know, it's it's similar rage, yeah, emotion, temporary insanity. And uh, but it's a good question. I don't know if we ever see Clark do that again. Caitlin, international folks, hello. After Pete left the show, were you expecting anyone else to find out about Clark's secret to fill that space? And if so, who would you have imagined finding out? And were you surprised it was Chloe? Well, we know it couldn't be Lex, <laughs> you know, we know it couldn't, you know, uh, who else could it be? Lois, uh, she, uh, you know, just yeah. doesn't fit. She's too new to the show. Um, so really, what, Lionel? I don't know. Sheriff Adams. Kinda, <laughs> Sheriff Camille. <laughs> All right, Rosenbaum now, rating system. Rosenbaum Based rating. on the, the death of Alicia, how horrific that was, and based on the secret with Chloe, that that those two elements um and taking into account that that karaoke scene was the worst shit i've ever seen <laughs> i'm gonna give this right right take away one of your favorite scenes and just put that in there so we can eliminate i'm gonna eliminate give this it down a to solid two. i mean i kind of want to give it because of that secret kind of a two rows because of that a rose and a half i'm gonna give it a rose and a half tom i'm gonna give it two roses and I think there's a lot of great scenes in this. There the were. episode itself, I don't know, but there's a lot of great scenes. So Ryan's going to have uh, his work cut out for him. Ryan, what do you give it? Uh, 1.5. All right, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Death and save count. One dead, Death Alicia, rest count. in peace. Three save, Jason saves Lana. Clark saves Jason. And Lois saves Tim. Through 12 episodes, eight dead, 25 saved. Series 100 dead, 128 saved. Damn. Hundredth person dead on Smallville might have been the saddest wow. so far. She was the hundredth person killed. Ryan's huh. favorite Ryan's scene. Favorite scene. Oh boy, I know what it is. Well, it was. It's good. so easy. It's the karaoke scene, obviously. I'll kill you and your family. <laughs> All right, scene one. Chloe finds out. Scene two. Ooh. Lex and Genevieve. Mm. Scene three. Clark almost kills a man. One, easily. Tom, Chloe finds out the secret. I think my favorite scene is number two, but I don't think it's Ryan's favorite scene because I really liked watching you guys. We'll say it. Like I said, but um, I don't think it's Ryan's favorite scene, though. I'm going to say it's scene, it's choice number one. It is choice number one. It has to be. I mean, come on. 
I wanted to throw I just wanted to throw a two in there because it was just it was a the first it, it couldn't be it because it was the first time we saw you and then but it was just fun to watch you spar with uh, Jane Seymour and you pour you, you go in yeah. you pour like three different drinks in that one scene mm, I had to get drunk <laughs> <laughs> that is it for the episode what an episode it was i hope you had some laughs i hope you get laughed at me barking at the karaoke scene <laughs> uh stick around next week as we enlist in talking about season four episode 13 recruit sounds like an episode that probably won't be good recruit <laughs> some freak of the week recruit somebody's getting recruited to some stupid thing i do feel like some of the worst smallville episodes turn out to be the best podcast episodes though <laughs> that's true oh yeah <laughs> Let us know your thoughts on the episode over at our socials at Talkville Podcast or Talkville Pod. Show the support for the podcast by joining Patreon at patreon.com slash Talkville. And you can be a patron and be on the show and get to ask questions. Tons of stuff. Um, also, my uh, Instagram at the Michael Rosenbaum, my link tree. Make sure you go there and check out the cons that Tom and I will be at. where We're doing a con, a Smallville con in October. And we're going to do a live, uh, yeah. live Talkville podcast in L.A. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Talkvillepodcast.com for all the merch. Inside of you online store for other Smallville merch that you might want. Um, go to the show's description. You'll see all, everything you need. Um, this was a lot of fun. All right, Ryan, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Tom? Yeah, again, um, Ryan, thank you for your patience. And remember, folks, always hold on to Smallville. And of course... We can't forget our top tier patrons. So patreon.com slash Talkville. We love you. These are the top tiers who get back to the podcast. Tom, take us off with all these beautiful people. I wanted to start from the bottom today, but I'm not going Let's to. Let's do Next it. Time. Let's Nikki start G. from the bottom. We're going to start from the bottom, going from the bottom to the top. Isn't there a song? We could do it. Kal-El 38, BC, Olga, Prokop, Christy H. Libertariat. Thank you. Patreon Saint of Smallville. Major Paradox, Keith B, Chadwick B, uh, Deep Row, CJ, Seagal, and Seagal. Devin. And Devin, Yeah, Seagal. we're getting there. Matt C, previously on Smallville. Um, you're you're going to take this. Pip Kenobi. Jeffrey K and Eric M. Yale M, Monica T, Anna B, Jenny B, Spicy Chicken, Lady L, Charlene A, Daryl E, the Alexander Castle, Patrick R, Carrie Ann, Chicken Flower, Sammy Charman. When you're rich, you aren't eccentric. You aren't. When you're rich, you aren't crazy. You're eccentric. Steve and Nate Danger, Rachel D, J S, Danny L, Felicia R, Brad A, Cassie B, Randy S, Jen T, Matt Rick, Tina E, Shannon Fofanon, Cindy C, C G L, Mary and Louise L, the Coopers, Carlene A, Matthew and Lincoln B, Dak Flando, the W, Sebastian F, Drew, Michelle M, Christoph S, please N. Ginger Moose, McBurts, Leslie V, Eldon Supremo, Jules, Karen Air M, D Brown, Claire M, Jesse C, Mr. Home Arcade, Corey, and Ken the Limerick. Dude, you're killing this. Do you always read from the bottom up? <laughs> I like it. This is crazy. Tommy Z Boston, 68, Carlos C, Doug R, Big D, Jammin, J, General Zod, Deadvid, Jeanette E. Damn. Who's that? Early is on time. Finky, Dark the Keely, Stephanie K, Nanine W, Chris. Didn't be Eric K. Brian H. I made Talkville say butts. Heather and Greg, love you guys. Jorel, Craig G, Randy B, Jordan M, Ryan R, Michael P, Teddy127, Amanda R, Anna M, YVR Grips. Thank you guys. Sarah W, Brian G, Nancy D, Lana Rams with Banana. W. Oh, I said it wrong. Glenda, the good witch. Parisho, 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 uh, sure. Osama A, we love you. Jason W, Tom N, Kimberly L, Bob K, Garrett W, Esteban G, always hold on this bubble. Brett G, Leilani and ninety nine more. Karen Apple M, Fatima T, Ray H, love that guy. Abby P and Betsy D, I love everybody. Sophie M, Shane W, Thomas the Leaf Blower, Little Lisa, Santiago M, Raj T, Leanne P. Nikki G. Thank Nikki you guys. Like, we love you. We just decided to read from the bottom up because everybody's just as important. Um, and uh, those have been around since the beginning. We can't thank you enough. And those that are new, giving back to the show and you want us to continue on, hopefully we'll have a season five. It's all up to you. The more people to join. So thank you. Top tier patience. Tommy, love you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs>